G'day everyone, I'm RJ Martin. I'm the lead Senate candidate for the Great Australian Party, GAP, for the state of Queensland. So I've been getting quite a lot of questions, as you'd probably appreciate, in running for the Senate, and I thought I would do something a little bit different and to better answer people's questions by doing video responses for some of them. So I would appreciate if you could please share these videos and get the word out that I am answering these questions. And there are you know, some very specific questions that some people ask and basically they would like some kind of solutions to their problems or to find out what uh, my own personal beliefs are or the Great Australian Party policy is for certain issues. And then there's also more generic questions that a lot of people have been asking. So uh, if I receive more of those, I can just combine them and, you know, answer your questions. I will also de-identify the questions and so it's not revealing identity of the person sending them. Unless you specifically want me to mention you, you can just add that to the question. And how I'll probably do it is answer or have it flash up on a title what the question is and then uh, do a little video answering the question and that's it. So I received this message. Dear RJ, can and will GAP change some laws for the Disability Support Pension, DSP? I've worked a great deal of my life paid ta and paying taxes. I'm now ill. These bastards still want me to work. I've been fighting them for the last two years. It's still going on. I have multiple illnesses and other injuries to my body. Example, IHD, heart disease with one blockage at 80% and another two not sure the percentage rate. And this was early in 2016. Uh, PTSD long term in 2001 to 2004 with depression and anxiety. And now an MRI has found white matter in my brain. So presumably a brain tumour. I'm diagnosed with vascular dementia but shoulders are no good with several injuries within. Carpal tunnel in both wrists. Diabetes type 2. Chronic headaches. My heart is inoperable, so that stuffs me up somewhat as surgery goes, uh, as the risk involved, I can go on. I have several doctors stating I should be on a DSP, and they, as in Centrelink, uh, still want more evidence, WTF. Or they found something small that denies my rights. Everything I give as evidence, they seem to find something to stop my application. Anyway, I'm sure you're busy and I'll leave it at that. I will be dead before anything happens. I have a bleak future for work unless there is a position you have and I can rest after standing for five minutes wanting to sleep. I have one foot in my coffin and the other is approaching. I think the government wants me to have both feet in the coffin and my body sitting in it before they will think about giving a DSP to me. Uh, this is the thanks you get for working your bum off uh, all your life. Thanks for your time. Regardless, you still have my vote. Regards, and I'm withholding the name. So that also reminds me of a case uh, that was around Newcastle, probably in about 2005, 2006, where there was a man that had brain cancer, inoperable, uh, I'll just try and find him. I think his name is John Grayson. Uh, brain cancer. And anyway, Riff, uh, John Grayson, he, as I said, had brain cancer and it was inoperable and growing. And he was denied the disability support pension. He had to keep wasting what pre precious little life he had going to you know, these job interviews at the job agencies, uh, which, you know, that's another issue about the effectiveness of those job agencies and if they actually do anything for their money anyway. I'm sure there are really good uh, job network providers, but there are a lot of 
terrible ones that basically you just get your own job and they get paid for you finding your own job but anyway so unfortunately for the questioner he is going through this problem so I'm just quickly looking up with John Grayson I do believe he passed away a few years ago and he was uh, advocating for euthanasia that you know he owns his own body and should be able to uh, die as he sees fit rather than you know going vegetative and all this other stuff but just trying to quickly find this stuff so even this is uh, from a website dying with dignity tasmania and it's from john grayson and it says in 2014 i had a cold it was very painful and on the 10th of november 2014 i experienced the worst pain i've ever had in my life by magnitudes i could only imagine that my eardrum had ruptured or something by the 11th the pain had only increased if anything and goes on that he went to the gp and he collapsed onto the ground with a grand mal tonic clonic seizure uh, he was admitted to john hunter hospital in newcastle and there was a large ma uh, mass of approximately a very large chicken egg size found in his brain it was a tumor and it was grade three anaplastic aggressive malignant ganglioglioma the prognosis was two to five years of life left and he was 33 at the time and he was still uh, mentally active that kind of thing but even though that's also a euthanasia issue which some other people have been asking about so i'll answer that as a separate little mini video but it just shows that centrelink gets things wrong uh, quite clearly John Grayson should have been on a disability support pension and it's my understanding that he did actually get on it after he appeared in several newspapers like the Newcastle Herald complaining about it and obviously this questioner based on what they've told me they should be on a disability support pension now I do understand that there are some people that are on it uh, that should not be and those people should be prosecuted uh, as well as people that assisted them to do so uh, for instance there was just a uh, case in the newspaper about a woman who was pretending to be blind and she went to a particular doctor and she I think her house was raided and it had two hundred thousand dollars cash in a safe and all this other stuff and with that, that particular woman it is alleged and i assume it's still before the courts uh, so you know we have to be careful what he said but it was alleged that she was training other people to uh, also rip off Centrelink which isn't really ripping Centrelink off it's ripping all taxpayers off uh, because government gets their money from taxpayers uh, again we can get into banking questions later and fractional reserve banking and whatnot and the issuance of money but that's again a separate question people like that if they are indeed guilty should be uh, prosecuted and locked up etc and as i said if they are guilty of it uh, if things are before the court and they haven't been found guilty yet and the evidence hasn't been presented yet but as i keep saying with this particular individual they should be on the disability support pension based on what they've said and obviously the rules are very twisted and incorrect or it hasn't been applied properly uh, in the questioner's situation in mr grayson's situation and also with people like the woman who is alleged to have been pretending she was blind uh, which is just sort of crazy anyway I don't know how someone can pretend they're blind and not be caught for several years uh, it reminds me of an episode of MASH 
uh, you know, the old Korean War TV show where Hawkeye was temporarily blinded by a flash or something like that. And then later on, he was going around pretending he still couldn't see, but then uh, Houlihan chucked a cup at him and he caught it. So, you know, he got found out that he could see because he was trying to take advantage of that. And that's just a, you know, a silly pop culture reference. But uh, again, I don't know how when someone goes to Centrelink to do an interview that it can't be found that they're not blind. And I understand that there is different degrees of blindness, there's tunnel vision, etc. But still, the question should be asked uh, of the people at Centrelink uh, who interviewed that particular woman, why they wouldn't have raised their suspicions earlier if they had any suspicions at all. So I'm fully in favour of supporting people uh, that require help, and so is GAP. It's actually an official policy uh, to help Australians in need, and obviously people who are suffering genuine disabilities that prevent them from working and... Uh, particularly people who are in a process of dying, then they should well be supported. And even if only one person is elected to Parliament, they can do a private member's bill to alter bad law as well, just so people are aware.